Do you like being an American? Are you interested in taking cities by firing 100,000 arrows at their walls? Then you'll enjoy playing the High Elves. The High Elves are an elderly population of off-brand humans that have dedicated their lives to protecting the world, making them the immortal UN. Reduced only to You must fight, slug, and withstand for long enough to build the Burger King crown that prevents the rats from building their demon liberal bell. We will be playing as Tyrion the Phoenix King and wielder of the magic. Magic sword. Can these off-brand humans beat the plague rats? Will the high elves invade and pillage the whole map in the name of world peace? This is my extremely scuffed high elf experience. Our journey starts here on the battlefield fighting the otherwise known as the Edge Lords, Goth GFs, or Dark Elves in a heavily tutorial-infused battle. After we just barely won, we expanded on our army to include more friendly fire mechanisms programmed with a singular goal to kill with no discrimination. When I began this journey, my aim was to conquer the entire map and get the domination victory. Please forgive me, I come from three kingdoms. The Sword of Cain, otherwise known as the Zomer Bopper 9000, is essential for making Tyrion the godliest phoenix god he can possibly be. But to get the Master Sword, we have to negotiate and synergistically annihilate the competition. The conquest started with the Dark Elves at the Glitter Tower, and of course they did a manual battle just so I could fully understand the definition of collateral damage. That's my glitter! Now that we've peacefully resolved that matter, I want to introduce you to my Phoenix. Imagine if Pidgey was lit on fire, and then took out all his rage from being bullied all these years, and you'll have the Phoenix. I named my Phoenix Billy, because no one can quite let freedom reign like Billy. But Billy is only one bird. The true secret to playing the High Elves is the Lothern Sea Guard. Technically, they are like the Coast Guard for High Elves, but I like to think of them as the priests of the High Elf Kingdom. Sure, you could look down on them for being so easy to get, but at the end of the day, they're a fuel-efficient hybrid that can rain down both arrows and provide a stabbing if the enemy gets too close. And they are most useful in a siege setting where you can simply fire 100,000 arrows at their walls until eventually they give in to capitalism. Now that I've broken down what makes our High Elf armies decent, let's return to the map where, as you can see, the war efforts are going quite well. We've assisted and fixed all of our Dark Elf cities to be free, and the military-industrial complex is just barely keeping our economy afloat. After destroying that Dark Elf clan, I got distracted and began sailing down south to take these people's land because I saw that they didn't like me. Well, maybe I don't like you. Well, maybe I don't like you. So we dumped 30,000 arrows at them and took their city, even killed their stupid dragon. God, I wish I had a dragon. After taking that, the vampires rolled in and took this other territory that I was clearly saving for myself, so naturally we had to declare war on them and their cliche bad army. At least our people get to do some skeet shooting, and we got to have a nice cinematic shot of Billy here. With that, we took one more city, and it was on to the others. We're gonna make a great trade deal. Not only do high elves get to make elven drip and use it to boost trade deal value, but you can also make your trade partner sign a TOS which signs over their right to privacy. Now it's you can monitor all of their moves and adjust their social credit score accordingly. This is useful to keep track of enemy moves but it's even more useful for when you inevitably betray your allies because having friends is strictly against Sigma Rule 314. Before we betray our allies, we had one more Dark Elf we needed to integrate into our city. So I lined up multiple armies on our borders and declared war so we could blitzkrieg their land immediately. In the first battle, we used the tried and true tactic of body blocking and using archers to kill absolutely everyone. Then spent the majority of the battle constantly moving around the big bird to keep their archers on the move. In the second battle, I placed my army, then followed the enemies as they approached. The horse said to the others that the trees were speaking yes. German, and then 1,000 arrows came flying in. One cavalry unit ran around my infantry, and half of my archer line decided to start running away. I can't blame them, though. It's not like they had a weapon or anything on them that they could have used to shoot them off their horses. In the third battle, we took the port, and I watched Tyrion eat entire groups of people into the air. I also decided to mix it up a little this time by hiding one army away and having the other army distract them so we could hit them with the B flag. Not a bad idea. However, it was a bad idea to put them in the very back corner of the map because it took about three minutes for them to flank, leading to the one thing we always score above average with, casualties. By turn 60, we had reached the top of the inner circle, and we had arrived at the coalition of peace and love that held the Sword of Cain. But before we would open up the Shadow Realm with anger, deceit, and stress, I decided to hold off until our economy was sound enough for an all-out war. Over the course of numerous terms, we built out numerous upgrades, signed numerous trade deals, and constructed numerous new buildings that would bring in numerous money. Turn by turn, our Sigma grinds and 
allowed us to build a very profitable economy that could fund all kinds of fun new things for our armies, like <laughs> capitalist birds, I assume, because they were not cheap. After many turns had passed of all this economic mumbo jumbo, I began itching and shaking with all the peace that had been taking place, and I was ready to charge into battle. At the start, it was quite fun and nice to use all these cool new units we had acquired. The dragons vomit lasers at the enemy troops, and they go flying like the weak little fleshlings they are. Then when you have four of them, it can be very spooky for the enemies to go against. The sword masters of Hoth are cool too, although with a name as long as that, I prefer to just call them my hoes. And I use those hoes to run a train on these spearmen. <laughs> After that, I brought all three of my armies into a siege on Gayvale. Oh, the reason? I wanted to see the dragons step on their city. Unfortunately, I found out that there is a 40 unit cap on manual battles. So we ended up losing a lot of hoes and spearmen as I constantly looked around for the dragons to come in like a lost puppy looking for their standard. The long and short of it is, they had a dragon, we couldn't bring ours, and we won. Kind of. I did get to actually use the dragons on the Phoenix Gate, which was pretty neat, but even neater was the part where we took all four dragons and imposed our dominance on their eagle until they sadly walked away. The conclusion of the battle is that dragons are very cool big birds, and I also turned that decisive victory into a Pyrrhic victory, proving I'm an incompetent <laughs> After that, all we had to do was kill this army and we would have our sword. Then we could declare peace and leave these people with all this land we had barely touched. I asked them to simply wait a turn for me to recharge, but that's when they took the opportunity to skedaddle. That's okay. This is fine. Not an issue. But I will now take every last territory from them. Any land they've ever seen, any dirt they've ever walked on will now become Phoenix. <laughs> I was acting. Where was I? The play of the game has to be the part where five dragons just kind of stared at each other until the one that wasn't mine just kind of fell over. Our warpath led us to the mountains where they would hide with Hello? Dutch and the troll Fajord. It was here that we committed various war crimes and had to challenge their very strong and durable sword-wielding leader who is built like a heavy select for strong blackout with the first transaction no one thirsty mailing bag until they were lethally bombed. With that, we had become the WWE World Champion, and I was pretty dang stoked. However, then I noticed that the glow wasn't around Tyrion, it was around All Star. Oh. We've made a grave mistake. After doing a little didgeridoo, we transferred the sword to the right hands and we had reached an all-time peak in both our economy and our morale, leading me to the conclusion that maybe war crimes aren't that bad after all. We had become the Sigma Melves. Even when the Thousand Maws decided to attack us, it still ended up working in favor as we got to try out the sword. And let me say... It's pretty nutty. Not only does it do incredibly high amounts of damage, but it can also spawn in the Displacinator that will tear an infantry unit in half. It was truly a blast to use, and I completely forgot that I had a whole army behind me that was getting chased around by horses. At this point, I thought this game was for children, and that I was king of High Elf Mountain. But then... <laughs> The war on rats lasted multiple days that blurred together. I first encountered them at 1am on Wednesday, and last encountered them at Time Unknown on Sunday. The skaven rats in this game are truly the cancer that lives beneath the commonwealth. They're the square piece of a circular pizza, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the sweet balance of jelly, and the lucky charms without any charms. Anyways, when I get submitted to the psych ward, I'll tell them that it was the skaven that did it, because they legitimately drove me up the wall, across the street, and into a Arkham Asylum with their bullshit. Now, there was too much saves coming to write the 20-hour rat wars into the story, so instead, here's a 30-second speedrun of what happened. First, they used fat rat rich yeah, boy tactics to aggressively acquire other people's land. Then, once they took that land, they amassed a large rat trust fund and decided that it was time for the high elves to commit die. Now, I took issue with this because I'm a high elf. So we had to fight wave upon wave of their infinite cesspool of a population with our dwindling beta boy elves that will only protect their country for a premium rate. Where's the patriotism? This is <laughs> for Pete's sake. And the worst part of this situation was the leader of the high elves. Me. A man with a diminished IQ doing? and a dwindling brain cell count that just kept trading territory with them back and forth for 20 hours without even thinking that maybe this isn't working and that we should change up the tactics just a little. Another thing, our armies were were not well mixed. I think I had one army with like 16 melee troops in it. It was, it was pretty bad. And they constantly got torn to shreds by the gamer gunk battalions and rattling guns. Then, when I went to take back an easy crack shack for the home team, it's actually a surprise birthday party with the whole army waiting for us to arrive. In fact, we have some body cam footage right here. Let's take a look. There you have it, gentlemen. That's all you need to know. Now let's fast forward to the fun part where I pulled my head out of my Come
back. Once I realized that we were physically incapable of holding the top, I moved our troops inland and kept holding the left side out of pride. Then I started the third ritual and with one army at the top, they decided to spawn three armies next to mine. I kid you not, they each attacked me one at a time until I couldn't win any longer. So we reloaded to save, played out a bunch more turns that don't matter because it ended with me getting stomped into the dirt and pulling off the tactical maneuver of alt f 4 I had full intention of ending the video there, but then I heard a voice speak to me from the heavens. Hello, my, my name, name is Microsoft, Microsoft David. I, I found, found you the answer. answer. Kill them all. Why didn't I think of that? Phase 1 of our plan is completing the third ritual and preventing the invasion of the motherland. So after traveling back in time, we triggered the third ritual, then used <laughs> and one more reinforcing army to punt kick the rats off of our lands. Then to protect our capital, we bolstered its defenses with copious amounts of Priuses. Our capital started looking like it was a Toyota dealership. To help our good leaders, we dumped all of our trash into trash their equipment slots for every last bonus they could possibly get. And as our final act of this defense phase, we made friends with the unicorn corn furry clan, because if there is anyone I can trust to protect our left flank, it's the furries. Phase 2 of our comeback plan is the economic turnaround, and a surefire way to turn around any economy is through war, something we easily achieve by showing this kind pirate clan our peaceful ways. But I will still remain friends with all the high elves because I want to improve our reputation from murderous insane people to cooperative murderous insane people. One final touch we made to the piss was the addition of a mage, because only 45 hours after making this building did I remember that I could make mages with it. This gave an attempted to end the game with the final ritual, but Tyrion wasn't having it. Even though his whole army died, he was able to take it upon himself to remove their breathing privileges. On the bright side, our manual battles are going much better now against non on rat combatants. We just find high ground and I started blasting. Bah, bah. And we got to meet the Boomer! Skip it a button, da -da. We melted our enemies and I could feel the cortisol levels dropping as I watched them. <laughs> then we amputated the left side due to budget cuts and we brought every army we had to the right side to complete our economic expansion. To summarize this expansion, we took Yellow's capital, which was worth a lot of <laughs> Turn. Then we recommended that the Thousand Maws pull the Holy Flame, therefore pushing them out of this territory and onto a small piece of land. The Skaven started a plague at the docks without even being there, and we met a pirate named <laughs> the British Traveling Salesman. Finally, our good friends at Unicorn Gang ripped territory from the grubby little hands of the pirates, and with this, we mostly completed our economic expansion. Time for Phase 3. Now that we had money, men, and no one attacking us, we could begin the fourth ritual. And thanks to a bit of save scumming, we knew exactly where they would be. With that, we auto-resolved two battles and defeated them all on the first turn. Then we just kept lapping turns until the fourth ritual was completed. Before rushing into the next ritual, we made peace with the final High Elf Clan and pushed out all of the advancing Maws except for this one last gold mine. The Maws wanted a peace treaty before I took it, but I will only know peace when this gold is mine. Then once the mine was mine, I mined the mine and let them have their peace. John now that we had defeated John Zena, with all of our troops encamped in position, we began the final ritual and attacked as many of the rats as we could. Now the final army wasn't in range, so we left them alive for just one more turn. And when I left the turn, the rats ambushed one of my weakened armies at the top as they always enjoy doing. Little did they know that that is a sacrifice I am willing to make. I tried hiding from them in the encamp stance as I built my army back up again, but they insisted on attacking. Without their rat tactics of ambush, we could kill them with minimal casualties and with that, the first wave of VOOM was exterminated. Then I caught a glimpse of a pirate ship heading to take back their capital, and I had to send all stored. Secure the Brigadon! I even tried using the court to get a peace treaty, but our social credit score was far too gone by this point. Once that was solved, I decided with totally no save scumming at all to move all three of my armies into position before the 10th turn. And what a wild turn of events. At the halfway mark, we received a cutscene to talk about how the rats built a <laughs> that weakened the vortex so that they could siphon power for their top. Taco Bell, which they would bring to the heart of Oof one to ring 13 times and summon the red god. Shocked, scared, and shooketh. We, we killed every last one of them because we had three armies of ranged units and without the element of surprise, they are... <laughs> Some turns later, after declaring peace with Yellow and immediately being asked to declare war again Bruh. by an ally, the remaining rats showed themselves and we decisively eradicated their forces. From here, we kept lapping turns until we completed the final ritual and we were told the crown was made and it needed to be delivered by a very special good boy. But before that, we would need to reclaim the vortex from the vermin in a legendary final battle. So after balancing out my army with elite hoes, an abundance of lather and shield guard, and- <laughs> 
we advanced to fight them. The battle went in four stages. First, we had to barrage the Graciers with everything we had like it's a regular battle. Our hose held the line strong, and the range brought the pain on everyone. Although the artillery hits from their catapult did hurt quite a bit. Next, we had to fight the... <laughs> However, this time we got fun powers such as the <laughs> and a healing sphere for our troops. Between the nukes and the eagle bolt throwers that I should have been using for the entire campaign, the dark elves weren't a huge issue, although the infantry did get pretty torn up. The third challenger was the lizardmen. <laughs> we pretty much lost all of our infantrymen during this phase. Unfortunate. And finally, and finally, and finally, in the final wave, we had to finally face our final foe. I sent Tyrion ahead alone to draw the aggro of the entire army, and then we used tornadoes, nukes, and many ranged projectiles to shred them, and they didn't even make it past Tyrion until the very end, and by then, it was too late for their kind. We had won the Squid Games, and this guy helicoptered his way into the vortex to save the day. I rate the High Elves 16 Lothar and Sea Guards and 4 Eagle Bolt Throwers out of 10. I found them to be quite enjoyable once I had even the slightest bit of a clue what I was doing. If only my brain learned things faster than 60 hours. And if any rats are watching this, I'm good. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I'm going to go take a nap now before I go look into what faction will bastardize next. And if you did enjoy it, please like the video as it might get YouTube to love us. I appreciate you all.